You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everybody, welcome to an all new, all different, all revamped episode of Don't F with the Original. Uh, I am sitting with... Pam. I'm a homeschooling mother, a pharmacy tech, an avid reader, a little bit obsessed with Star Wars and Outlander, and uh, basically anything that will distract me. And I'm Dimitri, editor-in-chief of uh, idiomatic.com and movie critic. Uh, now, we've been promising some major changes to the format of Don't F with the Original for a while, so I'd like to spend a few minutes discussing that uh, before we get into our review of the entire Step Up series. That means Step Up, Step Up to the Streets, because, you know, apparently the first one took place on an avenue. Uh, <laughs> Step Up 3D, Step Up Revolution, and Step Up All In. We're going to do them all. Every one of them. It's going to be really long. <laughs> uh, but before we get to that, I do want to mention that uh, Nick has decided to move on uh, from the podcast. Uh, what it is, it's just creative differences in the literal sense. Anyone who's listened to the podcast for a very long time knows that Nick is a little bit more of a heckler. He's more interested in doing these comedy conversations where we nitpick and we find things to make fun of. And uh, I was always more interested in analysis and looking at the wider themes and, and how it reflects we as an audience and the industry. And so after a while, it became apparent that we just didn't want to do the same thing. Having said that, I hope you'll stick around even though he's gone because we have a lot of exciting things in store for, for Don't F with the original. Uh, stay tuned soon for a discussion of Days of Future Past with uh, Rachel and Miles from Rachel and Miles Explain the X-Men. So they're going to be uh, uh, in one uh, episode. Uh, we got the guys from Turtle Soup, Eric and Ryan, to talk about Ninja Turtles. So we've got a lot of exciting guests coming up. So it's going to be a very different podcast. It also means that we're going to get to review movies that are coming out, like Step Up All In. We're going to do that, as well as the old movies, so we can compare and contrast. That was something Nick was categorically against. He was like, he didn't want to encourage these new movies and these remakes. And it was sort of like, that sort of goes against the statement of our show. I, I'm not going to comment. So yeah, and so uh, the reason I brought you here specifically for this episode uh, is because we're going to talk about Step Up. Now, I actually forced you to watch all Step Up movies. You had not done so. Yes, I was inundated with Step Up over the last two weeks. <laughs> it, it was, in fact, recording... This this podcast might be long, but it's not going to be nearly as long as having to sit through the first Step Up movie. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that you, uh, like me, uh, love dance. We're huge, so we think you can dance yes. fans. Absolutely. And I believe that the first movie we ever saw together, and this was like close to... Save the Last Dance yeah. about 15 years ago, 14 years ago, 14 years ago. Yeah. And we both came out of there like feeling very differently. <laughs> <laughs> you still won't go see movies with me because of it. And that's I not true. I, I saw young people fucking with you. Uh, the movie, oh, Young People <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> Let's be clear. Let's be clear, yes. I don't even remember that. Was I postpartum? <laughs> but it was such an experience because Save the Last Dance, for those of you who don't know, and it's it's going to play into our reviews of Step Up, mm -hmm. at least for me it is, mm -hmm. is, it, it is it's an obnoxious movie that is very formula, uh, sort of like Step Up is, actually. I, just a little, yeah. But minimizes the amount of dance in it. Uh, and I, I came out like angry. It was like, where was my dance? I, 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 you know, the, when he said save the last dance, I expected them to, you know, not save it for the next movie. You know? <laughs> I, I enjoyed it well enough because I didn't go into it, I guess, expecting it to be all about dance. Hmm. So. Well, let's, I think that's going to be our bridge to talk about Step Up because it essentially has the same plot minus the racial element, which was completely offensive in Save the Last Dance. Granted. Way. I'd argue, though, that that's because hip hop, when Save the Last Dance was made, was still a black art. So the idea of a classical dancer incorporating hip hop into her routines, they had to make it about race, about appropriating black culture. Whereas now, hip hop is across all cultures, so they don't have to use the same trope to make it that's valid. That's a really interesting point. I think you're right. So the first Step Up movie, because I just had to go through it, Tyler Gage, Channing Tatum's character, uh, randomly walking around after a party with his two friends, breaks into an art school and they vandalize the stage. And when the rent-a-cop comes in, the he, he takes the fall for the other two guys and ends up getting community service uh, in on, on the place of, of the, the crime. And while there, sees Nora dancing, who's just lost her partner and she's preparing her 
senior piece that's going to help her get into a dance company, and he decides to help her. And in doing so, of course, radically changes the way she dances and completely changes his outlook on life and becomes very serious, and it's all very formulaic and very predictable. It's by far the worst step-up movie. By far. It felt very long. I I personally felt that there was way too much generic hip-hop dancing in it. Mm -hmm. I was not impressed with the dancing at all. And that might be because Channing Tatum maybe can dance, but he's not a dancer. I found the movie to be insanely predictable and painful to get through. And the whole idea that what... they, They, you know, Nora and Tyler fight, and then... His friend's brother gets killed pulling a stupid stunt. And that brings him back to, you know, I guess I'm going to be serious. And he convinces her to, I don't know, I just, I found the whole thing ridiculous. They establish that he's an orphan. They establish that he is hell on every foster parent he's in. So there's issues of abandonment. And there's sort of the the idea that he likes to, he, he, he subconsciously gives up on himself before anyone has a chance to give up on him. But like the racial issue that's only glanced mm-hmm. at in Save the Last Dance, I feel that that aspect was only glanced at. I think you're right about the uh, the third act death. There's a, there's a you, you, where you're like, it, it feels like such a plot mechanics thing. It's like, yes. oh yeah, it's like he's spinning out of control because we need him to spin out of control so we get to know how bad things can get for this guy, and then we need to bring him back and and, and you know just let's go for melodrama is the only way that's exactly. gonna work. You know? Yeah. I can't think of another term for Deus Ex Machina, but that's what it felt like. Like, you gotta kick this guy in the balls, so this is how we're gonna do it. And you could see it coming a mile away. As soon as his friend had a kid brother, you could see it coming a mile away. Yeah. The only good thing I'll have to say about this is that Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan have genuine chemistry, and it actually shows on screen, not just Mm -hmm. off screen. Yes. And I think that drives most of the movie, because I think I would have given up on it a long time ago, if not for that. In fact, this movie turned me off so much that when Step Up to the Streets came out in theaters, I was so turned off by the first Step Up that I was like, and I love dance movies, but I was like, I'm not watching this. Mm-hmm. And it's only after I saw Step Up 3D that I was like, oh, okay, they went in a different direction, so maybe I'll give this a try. Because mm-hmm. Step Up to the Streets, is she Channing Tatum's sister is what I got from it? Well, they cast her like that, but she doesn't have the right name. Channing, T- Channing Tatum's sister doesn't pop up until the third movie. Yeah, yeah, because she's played by Alison Stoner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and, and so Camille pops up in the third movie, and she's, an, I guess, a presence in the first movie to give him a heart. How he treats this foster stepsister, or whatever, is supposed to give him heart. Well, I mean, he would have more than one foster stepsister, logically, if he's been bouncing from home to home. Logically, yeah. logically. So it could be, but we're never, it's never actually clear. We just know that they have a past relationship. It's never clear. But I find initially they've inverted the position. So if in the first movie it was the privileged girl and the underprivileged boy, in this movie we've got the underprivileged girl and the privileged boy. Yeah. And um, uh, the idea, the plot of what it is is, is uh, she's sort of the female uh, Tyler Gage, because that's Channing Tatum's uh, name in the Step Up movies, Tyler <laughs> Gage. Yes, not Channing Tatum, Tyler Gage. Tyler Gage, which is like the ultimate action hero name. Like, it's like <laughs> you should be stopping spa- alien terrorist threat with a name like that. But I digress. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yeah, so it's, 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 it's her story. She's, um, she's sort of like Channing Taylor, like Tyler Gage, sort of a chronic loser who d- deliberately sabotages herself every chance she gets. Mm-hmm. Her, it's more driven by ego. Yes. Well, you know what I think it's driven by? It's, she's, she's trying to recreate experiences she had with her mother. Mm. She also is orphaned, though she seems to be living with her mother's best friend, not in just in a random foster family and she's trying to find family elsewhere so her obsession with breaking rules and participating in street dancing is all about trying to go back to her family and fit in with this street family that she's built up for herself mm. so she's part of a crew that takes things very seriously <laughs> too seriously a little bit obsessively serious we're dancing on the street <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is going to be a theme in the step up movies for those of you who don't know uh, these movies uh, the t- people take dance like way too seriously and I don't mean like as a vocation of course you can take any job you take very seriously and make it your vocation, your passion. There's nothing wrong with that. These are people who think a, 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 a well-executed pop and lock might kill someone else. Like the, the, it, it does appear that way. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, doesn't that happen in the first movie? <laughs> he gets like step, you know, dance attacked in a bathroom for all. No, that's in the that's in separate that's, 3D. It's in 3D. Okay, yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, it's we're gonna ridiculous. get to that because it's one of my favorite scenes <laughs> in the movie. I was like, I'm so on board for this movie the minute that happened. 
Uh, but get to, but getting back to step up too. So she, um, she gets a chance to, uh, get into the same school, uh, um, Tyler Gage was in, uh, due to Tyler Gage's, uh, machinations mostly. Exactly. And then he exits the movie after jumping on a trampoline. Like he, li- like he almost literally trampolines out of the movie. It's true. <laughs> I didn't think of it, but it's true. <laughs> He's like, I'm only here for five seconds. Boom, I'm gone. And then she gets into this thing. She, she hooks up with all the losers in the school, essentially all the rejected kids in the school. And I think that's where the movie starts becoming a lot more interesting because it becomes a little bit about them as well. And it's all the idea of, of the school being very compartmentalized about what type of uh, 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 art you can re- engage in. I- yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the best answer is actually a sound engineering student. Yes. Yes. And I like that idea, like the idea that we have um, sort of, just as a culture, sort of prioritize certain types of art rather than others, and that that's inherently stupid if you're going to work in the field. Like, you shouldn't be... You need to be a triple threat. You need to be a triple threat. But more than that, you shouldn't always just look for the stardom. Like, I'm only an artist if I'm on stage. Well, actually, the sound engineer does a, a lot. They, yes. You know, producers, music producers do so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, anybody who's listened to Justin Timberlake and, and uh, Nelly Furtado in, her, in the later half of her career mm-hmm. will notice an enormous change that propelled them to the top and made their music New sort of... New production team. Exactly. And that's, that's all Timberland. Yeah. And he's in this role he's a music producer. Yes. So their creative input is undeniable, but we do just sort of like no, we just focus on Nelly Furtado, Justin Timberlake. Well, hopefully it's evolving if you get things like David Guetta, who yeah. he is the producer, he's not the artist, but it's always David Guetta featuring Usher or Stop. whatever. So you're getting more of an idea that it's the production team that's that's creating the music. You're true. That's true. That's very true. But we're just starting, and I like the idea that step up two sort of addresses that. I th- I think that Yes. Part of the story is more interesting than the Andy part of the story. Well, like the, the, that's the one where the, the, the guy gets a contract and takes off, leaving his producer behind. And mm. I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. Should be DJ, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, man. You cannot beat Will Smith without Jeff in the background. Nice backdoor, <laughs> nice <laughs> reference. <laughs> So this one's directed by John and Chu, and who's also going to direct a, a step up, uh, 3D. And I find that he established the vocabulary of what makes Step Up work. I, I think Step Up to the Streets it still feels like a compromise between the vision that they had for this franchise and, and, and the vision he brought to it. So it's not as good as the two, uh, three movies that will follow. Mm-hmm. But you can tell right away that there's a sudden shift. And I think it mostly comes from John, John and Chu, who just went like, let's throw as much dance as possible into and different things. styles of dance. Yeah. And focusing on the idea that people who dance different styles can work together. Mm-hmm. Uh, that might be a whole, so you think you can dance thing. Um, I also think, Again, referencing So You Think You Can Dance, they constantly talk about the idea of the dance family, the dance family, the dance family. And all the way through the movies, that's what they're trying to create. Mm. It doesn't happen so much in the first one, but in the second one, Andy's trying to go from this street family that's all very flat and monochromatic to this more varied family of all these people she meets at the school. And they're really focusing on the idea of dance as being a uniting force that can give you a sense of identity. It's true. And yeah, and I mean, the, this movie's, uh, I, I mentioned it before, but it is very much about art- artistic diversity, and I sort yeah. of focus on the elitism going on in the school, but yeah, you point out the elitism going on on the streets. On the streets is the same. John M. Shrew really introduced the idea of bring, bringing all these different styles, presenting uh, dance diversity as dance unity, essentially. Yes. And one well, that it gives you strength as well. Mm. They end up winning, of course, because they have all these different skills as opposed to only having being being a one trick pony. And he moved towards more of an ensemble cast feel to it, yes. which they'll keep. <laughs> and then there's a um, visual style. Like, I find Step Up mostly films people dancing to an audience that's in in the narrative. Mm-hmm. Whereas the way Step Up to the Streets is filmed and all subsequent Step Up movies it's very much filmed from the angle of like you're the audience from for this dance number. The camera is like that sits right in front of you. You don't even see who's looking at them. You're just seeing the number. You're mm-hmm. the audience. Yes. And I think I think that's the genius that John of John Chu. I think he knows how to build up 
a, a dance number as an action scene get you with a sense he of suspense. He's an action director, is he not? He has become an action director. Okay. He used to be a musical and dance director. Really? Because I only knew his name as an action director. Right. But that actually came after his success with those Step Up movies. Oh, ah, all right. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, he, he but that's he's a shoe in for sort of that action directing because mm -hmm. he sets up a set piece. That's what he does with these dance movies. Okay. He builds it up, creates suspense within it, where it's like, Oh, what's gonna be their secret weapon? She's gonna walk outside and there's rain, what are we gonna do? <laughs> you know? And the and the ballet teachers are coming in. Maybe they'll forgive her, maybe not, but it's sort of like the ticking bomb. Like he really sets that up like mm -hmm. a, a classic action thriller, you know? Yes, he does. I agree. And I think that's the genius of that makes it so amazing. Because as much as this movie feels compromised for me, I find once you get to the second half of the movie where it's just like payoff and payoff and dance payoff, mm -hmm. I I think it's fantastic. Yeah, you just get wrapped up in the dance numbers. Yeah. I was okay with the second movie. I found the characters more flat in this one. No, I found the main character, Andy, mm -hmm. flatter in this one. Andy and Chase were just not interesting for me. Get to Moose, though, and I'm completely in love with the guy. Yes. Very, very difficult not to be completely in love with this person. I, he's adorable mm -hmm. and talented and intelligent, and that, to me, is the triple threat. Adam Savini, who plays mm -hmm. him, is, is just is so charismatic and... You don't expect it because he doesn't have that classic Hollywood beauty Not about him. Yeah. So you sort of expect him to play the typical geek a nerd that actors who look like him tend to be cast in. Mm -hmm. And then the movie sort of halfway through just like pulls a rug from under our feet and goes like, no, that's not how you should look at him. Yeah. You know? No, he's not going to be the annoying one. He's going to be the, the breakout. Now, John and Shu goes on to do Step Up 3. Oh, the New York crew. Right, okay, continue. This one is my favorite by far at to, the, to date, and it's the one that I think made Step Up this super mega franchise. I think Step Up was like, it happened, and then you Step Up 2, and we were like, yeah, and then we were like, oh, there's potential there, and then Step Up 3, think, I think, made everybody turn around and go like, Oh my god, this is so much fun, and I think it's the one where producer Adam Shankman decided, no, the Step Up movies are going to be So You Think You Can Dance the Movie. Yes. That's what these movies are supposed mm -hmm. to be. And that was a brilliant okay. decision. You spend the whole movie, oh look, there goes Joshua, and yeah, that's legacy, and yeah. <laughs> and the spirit of it, like the family thing that you mentioned, mm -hmm. gets like booted up to the hilt. To the and, next level, yes. Yeah. It's all, it's really all about, let's sh showcase all these dancers and the beauty of dance and the, you know, like mm -hmm. the, the glory of the life of a dancer. That, that's what these movies become <laughs> about. And that's the direction they should have gone with from the beginning. It's brilliant. In Step Up 3D though, what's the greatest part of it is that it's completely freaking insane. <laughs> the storyline is the least credible. Mm. Definitely the least credible. For those of you who haven't seen it, what it is is, um, okay, so Adam Savini, uh, uh, Moose, cool. Moose has graduated from high school. He's about to go in co to college. He's an engineer, uh, but he also likes dance. He meets this crew from New York by finding a pair of sneakers that he likes. He follows oh. the sneakers. Yeah, it, like he follows <laughs> the white rabbit. Like yes. that's, that's totally exactly. what it is. Exactly, he went down the rabbit hole. He goes, yeah, he goes into the dance rabbit hole dances against somebody he shouldn't have danced against and then like gets himself into trouble at a nightclub because they didn't like the fact that he danced next to them and then tried to assassinate him with a well-executed <laughs> Joshua pop and lock <laughs> and that I'm just gonna stop for that scene because we need to talk about that scene how ridiculous it was <laughs> it felt like kindergarten cop <laughs> You know, it's Arnold, you know, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger battling the bad dude in a bathroom. That's exactly what's going on. Except you've got, you know, Adam Savini playing the Terminator. So <laughs> he goes into the bathroom just to take a leak, and then Joshua from a uh, season, I want to say four. Yeah, season four. Season four. So you think you can dance? Goes up to him and starts popping and locking him. <laughs> the weirdest thing happens. Adam Savini runs for his life, <laughs> <laughs> and you're watching it. Why? And then dancers pop out of everywhere and like try to corner him in the bathroom Dance stall. Dance ninjas! Yes! <laughs> and he's like swinging from bathroom stall to the other to avoid them like it's a freaking laser grid. <laughs> oh my god, I fell in love with this movie from that scene on. It's like, 
Oh my god, this movie's bonkers! <laughs> so from there, he meets a group that save him uh, and his uh, 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 mutant dance abilities <laughs> and bring them to their headquarters where they have a dance danger room like the X-Men. <laughs> But where they can hone their dance skills yes. with, like, an obstacle course. It's bonkers. It is completely bonkers, yes. The whole idea of it, yes. So the dance X-Men, who are called in the movie the Pirates, get into this sort of uh, a competition thing where they're going to face different they're dance trying, They're trying to win money because the, the house, the den mother, except he's not a mother, um, of this loft place has not paid their mortgage in five months. Yeah, because otherwise they'll lose the dance mansion. Yes. And <laughs> Preposterous. And then uh, he falls in love with a girl who turns out to be Mystique because she's really from the Brotherhood of Evil Dancers. Yes. yes. And uh, it's, it's, this movie's awesome. Well, and, and, and her brother was, you know, definitely Magneto to our, our X-Men house mother in that, yes, he was shunned from the dance mansion for his evil ways. Yeah. But he threw a dance competition or something. It's, it's, it's like he took steroids or something. Who knows? Uh, it's so <laughs> and when I say they have mutant dance abilities, I am not kidding around. Because there's one scene where they, lo they learn tango by osmosis. It's true. It's true. But that's one thing I liked about this movie. Is that in the previous movie, they talked about dancers with different abilities coming together and enriching one another. But all the numbers were still almost solidly hip-hop. Yes. This is the first one where they tried to showcase different dance numbers, again, making it feel more like So You Think You Can Dance the movie, in mm. that, you know, there was the tango number, and then there was that Broadway number with Moose and Camille dancing through the streets, like, singing in the rain. Mm. It was the first of the movies to actually show different, purely different styles, mm. as opposed to just incorporating them all into a weird hip-hop dance battle. Yeah, no, I agree. And, um... The, uh, the story, as bonkers as it is, has interesting themes that I like about it. Again, because it's So You Think You Can Dance the Movie, uh, what they've decided to do is to address dancers in these movies. They, they, they assume that the public that are watching this are dancers or aspiring dancers. And so the message of the movie is very much uh, a, a lesson for dancers to carry with them, not the general public. Mm -hmm. Although you, you can probably extend, extend that in more general terms to the general public. But the idea of this one is like, the, the, sh the lifespan of a dancer is realistically pretty short career wise and if you have diverse interests it is in your best interest to explore all of them yes hence the uh, the last scene where Moose gets the school to agree to let him double major in dance and engineering yeah and the uh, other main character uh, dance professor X there uh, <laughs> uh, you know going into film as well as dance it's, yes and I like that a lot I think it's a very true message and a very adult message in the sense of you if you have diverse interests we live in a society where we're told you have to choose what you do in in high school and then go into that in university but i mean like look especially now where adolescence is being extended in well into the 20s it's not reasonable for for societally to expect to have your life figured out at that age anymore so if you have diverse interests Explore them. Don't 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 lock yourself into into anything. a box. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the whole notion that we're going to have what four careers in our lifetime. Mm. That's what that's speaking to. This notion that yes, you can be a dancer in your early twenties and still nurture your engineering skills so that you can have a job when you're forty and you can't do plies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John M. Shu is a director who really masters 3D in a way that the subsequent directors of the Step Up franchise don't. Okay. In fact, in a way that most directors, period, don't. Because he uses it as a narrative language. Uh, I think the only director I've ever seen do it is not James Cameron, but uh, Martin Scorsese with like, Hugo. Okay, I see what you're talking about. So in the dance numbers, for example, in Step Up 3D, the first one where they, um, uh, uh, they fight the, uh, the rejects from uh, Mad Max there with the, <laughs> with the Sand Warriors, you know, the good guys are doing really well, and the, the, the 3D is used in um, a li midway between giving you depth and going a little bit in your face, right in the middle. Okay. And then the bad guys retort, and it's all in your depth. So you're like, ah, oh, the good guys are winning, because you get that sense of, like, they're a little bit more in 
involved with you literally because they're close to your face yeah and then the bad guys pop out their secret weapon which is like this lady doing the whacking thing <laughs> with her arms. and then the arms are like right up in your face and it's it's really interesting it's beautiful to watch it's a great effect but mm-hmm. it also communicates really it's like oh shit's gotten real now <laughs> it's like she's slapping my face almost you know well it takes you and puts you into the battle yeah that way. and it gives you a sense of who has the advantage in the fight or not without you know, the narrator having to say it or the characters going, oh, they're kicking our asses just by the use of a 3D. Okay. And it's, it made the experience so interesting. Like I watch it on video now and it's like, it's still a fun movie, mm-hmm. but it's, it, it isn't quite the same as watching it in 3D. All right. Uh, but let's get to your favorite. If- My favorite, absolutely. Step Up Revolution. We're back to the privileged girl and the underprivileged boy. Um, and it's about, a dude. I'm blanking. Sean and his best buddy. Sean, and- right. So they are they are trying to win a contest by getting as many YouTube hits as possible, which makes it very uh, social media conscious. Um, and they are doing these crazy flash mobs everywhere. They call themselves the mob. They shut down a whole boulevard and end up with this glass painted thing in the middle of it. And the girl is the daughter of a developer who wants to take over their sort of riverfront neighborhood and turn it into another luxury hotel and condo property in Miami. I like this movie, A, because it's set in Miami and anything that's hot and sweaty just makes it sexier. It's so much better than Baltimore. Hello. Uh, yeah, no, you're, that's a very good point. I think setting dance movies in hot locations yeah. gives them just more steam. And I, and I mean that with every every sense of the word. I also love this movie because of Catherine McCormick, who plays the female lead, having enjoyed her so much, and I think it was five or six, so you think you can dance? I don't remember. The problem I found in the previous movies is they sort of were trying to walk a line between someone who could act and someone who could dance, and they hit the mother load with Adam Savini. Mm -hmm. But they had people they thought were actors who could dance. I think they needed to find a dancer who could act reasonably, and I think they found that in Catherine McCormick, and that's why I find the story so much easier to watch. I think she's a reasonable actress. That is so fascinating because I think she's awful. Oh, see, we have a different perspective then. And maybe it's just because yeah. she's playing herself. Maybe it's just because I do en- I do enjoy her as a dancer so much that I was able to suspend any any real criticism of her acting. Whereas, let's say, for Andy, who I found flat in the second movie, I didn't enjoy her dancing as much, so it didn't carry me through from scene to scene as well. Mm. It helps that her, her character is more original and interesting. She seems a little more aware. I mean, the, the scene that they end up cutting to used to ruin her relationship or try to ruin her relationship with their father before they basically ruin their relationship with the public um, where she says you know yes we have to take down my horrible greedy father but actually I do feel guilty like she seems to have just a little bit more insight well she, she, she's playing the middle ground yes. right? she loves her dad she understands what he's trying to do she's just he won't listen to her and that's what's frustrating her yeah this is not a movie where there are bad guys because this is a save the rec center movie and- <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> Rec Center, Salsa Dance Club, Apartment, yes. Uh, Again, saving family, though. All these characters have no families. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're always know, he, orphans. You know, Sean is living with his sister, right? Yeah. And again, his niece, the random Camille character, the, the little girl who's supposed to make him have a heart. Like, <laughs> I don't understand this. But anyway. But yeah, and, but the, the bad guy who's trying to mow that, this down, it, he's positioned in a way that you understand where he's coming from. He's like, mm-hmm. oh no, look, this is going to be good for the city and I'm making money. Like, what's, what's the what, problem? What's, he's also the first recognizable actor to show up in a Step Up movie. Not, of course, including So You Think You Can Dance Dancers. In that, it's Peter Gallagher. And uh, Catherine McCormick, she's torn between seeing things her father's way, which she feels is completely reasonable, but at the same time seeing the cost of what he's trying to achieve. And she decides, well, the cost is too high in this case, but it's not like she feels like he's evil and he's going to show him yeah. she wants to reason with him if anything well yeah and that's what it is she's frustrated because he won't listen to her about what it is that he's t- trying to tear down and in the end the compromise that he comes up with that no we're not going to tear it down we're going to try and save the parts of it that are worth saving and build them into this new water waterfront revitalization that's what she was looking for yeah a- at the outset yeah not you know you can't build here but more we need to help these people preserve what it is that they have and that makes her infinitely more interesting than Andy or uh, yes. Natalie. Like I said, more insight. That's like a slightly yeah. broader world view than just, you know, your own small little problems. I mean, yes, okay, there's also the whole, you know, she's trying to get into this dance company thing. But hey, she doesn't succeed. No. Woohoo! Because this movie is not about, like, the power of dance. This is about what you do with art. It, yes. it very much is. Because 
the mob are they're a flash mob they do dance in the street gorgeous numbers uh, uh, but they, they just do it for the thrills and she comes in going like well, how about injecting some meaning into it so mm-hmm. that you can make it art? Do it with a purpose, yeah. Yeah. Because art does serve a purpose. Exactly. And because otherwise it's just self-aggrandizement. It's, it's, it's very, mm-hmm. it's very narcissistic as an activity otherwise. Yeah. So he, she convinces them to make protest art. And so far with the movie, I was like with it, but I, I, I felt the story was like, yeah, it's okay. It's not great. Mm-hmm. I think it lacks that sort of extra flair of crazy that I love from Step Up 3 <laughs> at that point. <laughs> And then the movie drives to home its point because performance art, like the Catherine McCarnock character, is the middle ground. Because after, once you get past protest art, you get into terrorist art. <laughs> well, they're trying to show you the two extremes yeah. before you settle back at something that's reasonable and societally acceptable. Because it is, it's terrorist art. And you watch it and you're almost wincing because you know that they're totally destroying their chances of winning the yeah. YouTube contest and alienating themselves. And I found actually the, the trick they use for that, the whole idea that the best friend gets all, and they're supposed to be so close and yet he won't even talk to Sean about the mm. fact that he's just discovered that this is their arch nemesis's daughter. I found that a little bit thin, um, but it was horrible to watch that dance number actually. You could see it. It was again, it was like a battle scene. It was yeah. like, the good guy's gone bad and why are they doing that? And why did everybody else go along with it? I don't understand. <laughs> Twitch, you let me down. But they set it up nicely in terms of the bro character, the best friend mm-hmm. character, uh, because he he's, you know, he shows up late for work, mm-hmm. and then Peter Gallagher's character just, like chews him out and goes like, "Sorry, you're not working here anymore," and not in a mean way. And they like, "Hey, you're late," mm-hmm. and he's like, "Whatever, dude." I was like, "Okay, well, if you're gonna do whatever, do to the big boss of the company. I can't expect you to work when I'm not around even more. So exactly. sorry, mm-hmm. here's the door." Yeah, and. All the characters going like, oh, that horrible man was like, no, no. that that was the thing to do. It was and, completely legitimate. And you're watching the movie, it's like, does the movie realize that? And then when uh, the, when he takes that bad turn into terrorist uh, um, uh, artist, you're like, oh, okay, no, they knew. Yeah. They knew that he was being self-absorbed. And yeah. they knew that the other characters were sort of blind to that self-absorption. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens when you're blind to yourself. So even if you have a cause... If you're self-absorbed, you go into this sort of self-destructive... You take it too far. Yeah. Yeah. And you you close the dialogue, and you don't affect change in the world anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, that's a really nice message. Yes. And it has terrorist dancers, and that's (laughs) wildly over the top, and I love it. (laughs) They have, like, these gas masks, and they're throwing uh, gas. They may have been throwing grenades for all the problems that it was causing, too. And the running of the guests running, screaming, and everything. Dance as weapon. It's my second favorite. Uh, I totally get why why it is your favorite. Mm-hmm. I think the plot is stronger than Step Up 3D. Yeah. Uh, I think the filmmaking is is in the same league, not quite as good, but in mm-hmm. the same league. And I think the message is just as interesting uh, as Step Up 3D in terms of like, oh, okay, it, we're not just giving you Hollywood platitudes. You no. know what I mean? I think I liked it most though because it took what happened in Step Up 3D, which was the slightly different dance numbers, not all hip hop numbers. They took it to the next level and they, they didn't isolate dancers for these new numbers. They took the crew that had all these skills and had them perform all these different styles. And I found that to be very interesting. Yeah, the dance numbers are fantastic. Yeah. They're outstanding. The one at the dock in the end with all the differences and then they're on the, the, the ropes hanging down, they're dancing in the air and then they're on the containers. I don't know. The whole thing was fantastic. The one with the shadows, where they're mm-hmm. in the restaurant, and she's dancing. Oh, that one was amazing, too. The dance set pieces are, I think, uh, 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 the best in the series in terms of conceptually. Conceptually. Well, they felt like, so you think you can dance numbers, all of them, whether it was the gas masks or the art museum or whatever it was. The one thing I would criticize about the, those dance numbers, director Scott Spear doesn't film them as well okay. as John M. Shu does. Uh, it's a bit choppier, and okay. the, the angle is a little bit more from the angle, so they are dancing to an audience. I'd be curious to know whether the cinematographers are the same. Or even the editor as well, what the sure shows choose, you know. Yeah. But the way it's filmed is a little bit less engaging than mm-hmm. Step Up 3D, and, and that for me is the key difference. But yeah, they're both of them for me are right up there. So. Yeah, so, so, so when you get to all in, then does the story, story continue to evolve? Does the script get better in number five? Absolutely. The script does get better. This is, I think, the strongest screenplay they've had in the Step Up series. Almost to the film's detriment because it lacks the goofy. Oh, okay. And for me, the most glorious moments of the later half of the Step Up franchise is just how 
insane things get. <laughs> <yet. laughs> well, yes, these these dance crews that have no money and are constantly struggling and trying to win contests all have matching costumes, like, the next day, and the skills to do all that body art. And Where does all that money come from? But anyway, I'm digressing again. It's like an action movie. There are some questions you don't need to answer. Okay. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's better that you don't because then you're, you're, you're asking me to reflect on other things, whereas if you just run with it, uh, my suspension of disbelief and the momentum will just carry me carry through. Carry you through, and you can not see all those little details. Exactly. Duly noted. And this movie is the one where they try to be the most realistic, and unfortunately, it lacks a little bit of that flair as a result. Okay. They're in Las Vegas this time, right? This, yeah. They start off in L.A. Uh, with um, Sean from uh, Step Up Revolution mm-hmm. uh, losing his crew, the mob, because... They're not making it in L.A. Their Nike money has sort of run out. Okay. Uh, and they're just failing one audition after the other. And then the crew are like, hey, we just want to go back home because we can't pay rent here. Yeah, or at we're least done. If we're at home. We can continue doing what we do, but we're at home. And he's like, what, you're just going to give up? Yeah. So he splits with them. So okay. already we start off with a dynamic where it's interesting. Sean is the asshole, not his best friend. Interesting. Okay, so... And so he stays in L.A., they go back, and in L.A., in LA he decides to form a new crew with Moose. Okay. Uh, Moose is an engineer. He lives with Allison. Um, Allison's character, Camille. They bring up all kinds of characters from the previous movies, including Andy from Step Up to the Streets. Okay. They enter a competition, kind of like So You Think You Can Dance, where crews are battling it out. Okay. And that competition le- uh, moves them to Vegas, and then they realize that the mob who went back to Florida, entered the same contest, so they're in Vegas as well. And then um, there's also an evil uh, uh, um, a crew. So there, course, it's, yes. it follows those three crews who are about to duke it out in this competition. Okay. So now Sean is dancing against his former yes. patriots. Okay. Yeah. And Sean just wants to win so badly because he's so tired of the auditions and the grueling process, the hard life that is being that is the life of a dancer, yeah. you know? And Andy, who, you know, grew up with a hard background, doesn't really feel his pain at all. You know what I mean? And she's like, no, like, we have what we have. We're dancing. Mm -hmm. It's way better than what I had before. Like, chill. Like, as long as we get to dance for a living, even though it's not, you know, Brad Pitt's living, Mm, it's a living. Calm the hell down. And he will not because he's just tired of having to worry about the bills and everything Mm -hmm. because he's sort of been brainwashed by the dream of success and hasn't really appreciated that, you know, life as an artist is the joy comes from being able to do what you love for a living, not not be, being rich. Being rich, yes. Or not, even recognized. Most people don't ever get to that, yeah. Yeah. So that's what the movie's about. Uh, there are very few dance numbers outside of the competition. That's unfortunate. Which means mostly only hip-hop we're back to that oh why would they do that i know it's heartbreaking i think the variety lent i don't know just let more depth by the way you guys if you're wondering why i'm the one doing all the talking all of a sudden i haven't seen it yet um for uh so you think you can dance fan absolutely see it everybody's in it like every freaking buddy (laughs) cyrus uh Twitch is in there, uh, Emilio's in there. Uh, if those who are following the current season of So You Think You Can Dance, during the auditions, there was, uh, I think her name was Anya, red-headed girl who yes. is uh, crump and pop and locking. Mm-hmm. She was she, fantastic, too. I remember when she got kicked out. She's in this, and she has a terrific subplot where oh, there's right. a, um, they're in the background, always in the background, there's a pop and lock courtship between her and the robot from Step Up 3D. Oh, cool. Where they they don't share a single word, but they're having their little romance through <laughs> pop and lock moves. It's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> it was my favorite part of the movie. All right, and now I have to go see it just to see that. Okay. <laughs> and if you had any attachment to these characters, and even if you're a fan, there's a fair chance you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Except most, but I, you know, it's well established. <laughs> but they, they know what worked in these, in these relationships and what the fans want to see. So, mm-hmm. uh, Camille and Moose are still together. And, they, well, that had to be, yeah. And because we want to see that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Andy and, uh, and, and her boyfriend, Chase. Chase, are not anymore. Okay. Because we didn't give a shit. Yeah. No. So they know, you know, yeah. they know we don't care, and they they gave us the couple we want. And I like the idea that these ca- these people's lives move on. Mm-hmm. It's not just like wishful. well, it, it would be uh, unrealistic to assume that all these characters are still together so many years later, anyway. So. Yeah. 
And it, it, that century is that the romance might have been more of a fling thing and shouldn't be glorified that much. And mm-hmm. considering it's sort of a meet cute go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like that idea. But the only romance that would have felt real in real life is Moose and Camille, and that's the one they kept. And that's the one they keep, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and the lesson in there is in, interesting, I, and there's a, sort of a, a, a slight dig at the L.A. lifestyle in the sense of, like, hey, if you're a dancer you can't make an L.A., just go elsewhere. <laughs> like, L.A. Well, is not, LA is not, not no, the only place in the world, you know? Vegas is a perfectly acceptable alternative. Vegas, New York, all these places would work. Especially for dancers, yeah. you know? So I like that the, the these ideas. Like I like the idea that Sean is proven wrong. It's like I'm not gonna give up on my dream. I'm gonna stay in L.A. And the mom's like, they get to the exact same point he did, but they get to go home. They get they get to pay their rent. Yeah, you know. And Does it's he like, end up homeless? <laughs> well, it was Moose. Uh, Moose gets takes him, him home, in. Uh, good old Moose. Good I old love Moose. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so the numbers, unfortunately, all hip-hop, it has sort of a Cirque du Soleil feel to it. Uh, okay. Because they're in Vegas, I think that's what he decided to go with. And see, that's one thing about these movies, is that I do not particularly like mainstream hip-hop. Mm. Even when it comes to that, I think you can dance. Give me Tabitha and Napoleon and lyrical hip-hop and something that's got a little bit more interaction and story than, than just two people popping and locking next to one another. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like trick hip-hop. It doesn't do it for me. If you had to rate them in order, the ones that you did see, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, how would it go from best to worst? Four, three, one, two. So step up revolution, step up three D, step up, and then step, step up, up, the up to the streets. Yeah. Uh, I would go having seen step up all in. I'd go step up three D, step up revolution, step up all in, step up to the streets, step up. Okay. Uh. So number five is third on your list. Okay. Yeah, it's right in the middle, and it's. I think even if there were more movies being made, it would still end up right in the middle. Excellent. Well, I shall see it, and then we'll check back. All right then. <laughs> um, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Next week, uh, I'm going to have the guys from Turtle Soup uh, joining me to talk about Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We're going to talk about the comics, the original movies, the original TV shows, and of course the new movie, how it holds up to it. Spoiler alert: it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. And um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, comments you want to share with us, your love of dance, step up uh, so you think you can dance. Adam Savini. <laughs> uh, you can write us at mail at idiomanic.com or post a comment at idiomanic.com. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. We're also on iTunes. If you could write us an iTunes review, we'd really appreciate it. It helps us continue to get the support to generate content for you guys. Otherwise, I will have no choice. Uh, uh, but uh, to try to infiltrate the pirates in New York um, so I can destroy the Dance <laughs> X Mansion. That's all, folks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>